Ready to start? <laughs> sure. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Today it is JJ and I. We're taking our She's Connected to a new level. Um, we have the proper cameras here, and that's because we are filming the course for Miss Suzanne Davis. Um, she is here to film her course on anxiety relief training. How are you doing today, Suzanne? Excellent. Thank you guys for having me. You're Yay. welcome. Yeah, it's been so fun having her this week. It's we good. have learned so much about uh, anxiety relief, mm -hmm. breathing techniques. Uh, she's had a lot of really good stories and analogies that have been really helpful and insightful. For me yes. personally, as someone who uh, suffers with anxiety every now and then, it's not my anxiety, though. It's not mine. It is, uh, <laughs> it is the anxiety. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like it's a common feeling to have those like panic moments uh, throughout your life maybe not every day but hopefully not every day but Suzanne has a lot of really great strategies to that she learned personally um, I don't know if you want to kind of start with your backstory maybe a little bit and where sure. you got started sure I actually struggled with anxiety for uh, all through my 20s and it was something that I was told I would have to manage for the rest of my life and I just didn't really buy that I didn't feel that so I just kept trying everything I could possibly find and then I landed in a yoga class and things felt pretty well pretty good first time I had slept all night in probably a couple of years so there was a light bulb moment there for me and I didn't fall in love with it immediately but over time it just it just felt so much better to be doing it than not that eventually I opened my own yoga studio and I've been doing that now for uh, just over 12 years Wow so when you first discovered yoga as your kind of ticket into a flow state which is something she discusses in her modules um, was it like the very first time you're like, oh, this is the feeling I want to accomplish? Or oh, did it take going back? No, you know in a yoga class. And I think if you're a business owner, you've probably experienced a flow state or you probably wouldn't be in business because when you get so passionate about something, you're really out of your mind. You're just in it, right? It, whether you're creating a bit. In fact, I remember the first, um, I actually, when I started my business, it was kind of a funny, not funny, it was kind of a rough story. I went to yoga training and the day I got back, they let me go at my job. So I immediately was a single mom with no insurance, no savings, no backup, no mm. support, no nothing. But I was sort of on cloud nine because I'd been at yoga training for over a month. And so for the next nine days, everything just fell into place and we opened the studio nine days later. But that nine days, I don't think I ever came out of the state of flow because you're creating you know, your schedule and your business cards and you're finding space and doing all this stuff. And so I think we're talking to a lot of business owners, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. correct? And so you know that state of flow where you're just in it and you're excited and everything's happening but then it gets to be a little bit stressful once you're responsible to keep the business going and keep everything, every, all the balls in the air. Yeah, and without really giving you know, everything away from your program, maybe a brief description of what a flow state is, because oh, yeah. I had never really heard it in that, I mean, I've heard of like, oh, you know, you're in a state of bliss or a, yeah. How have you heard You're it before? Like, like, oh, in I'm in the flow. flow. I'm really like, on a roll. Yeah, yeah. yeah, on a roll. But the flow state is something a little bit different if you can just briefly describe it. Yeah, that. and to answer your previous question, I really did in that first yoga class, I, it, I'm not sure I knew what it was, but I realized that I was kind of hesitant. I was like, should I even be here? What's gonna happen in this class? And then the next thing I know, a whole hour had gone by and I hadn't thought of a single other thing. Not a single other thing. I was just right there doing what the instructor said, trying to keep up. And so when you're in that state, there's no room for anxiety. There's no room for you to be going over your to-do list and your dinner plans and what you should do tomorrow or what's happening with your business. Like you really do get out of your mind. So anytime you feel like you're in the groove, on fire, on a roll, um, you kind of lose track of time. That's a key part of this training. I think there's other, there's other easier, simpler ways you can manage your stress and kind of balance your nervous system. But if you can do it in a flow state and it's fun and you enjoy it, why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just more fun for your life in general. Yeah, and uh, Suzanne had mentioned like different descriptions, uh, examples of how to achieve a flow state. So for someone like me, like yoga makes my mind race because I'm like, oh yeah. my God, it's an hour and I have so much <laughs> yeah. to do. Like it doesn't really calm me, yeah. but I have found that like running or uh, recently I've gotten into boxing, puts me in that place where like, I'm so preoccupied with what is happening in front of me mm -hmm. that all of a sudden it's so hard that I can't think of something else. And I just think that for me personally, that's how I, I get in a flow state. Either I'm working for hours on end and I get into the zone of editing, which Kelvin, our editor, experiences that same type of flow state. And all of a sudden hours have gone by and your hands are like, oh, oh I gotta get up, you know, but you're kind of in a trance where nothing else is on your mind 
And for me, to get in a, like a, a kind of high energy flow state is what is helpful because I have to be doing something very physical to where my mind has no room. To, and then with breathing and yoga, as much as I love it, and I think it's super important, an hour to an hour and a half of doing that was, uh, it was almost too slow for me. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna- You I'm stab gonna, me. No, no, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because yeah. yoga's not for everybody. It's not everybody's thing. Like I tried golfing, not my thing. Mm, and I don't have anything against it. <laughs> I even enjoyed it, but I wasn't, yeah. it, I didn't get me into a flow state. Yeah. So I tried painting, I tried hiking. Mm -hmm. I mean, really a brisk walk will do it. Mm -hmm. If you can go for a brisk walk for 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, mm -hmm. you probably have all felt that time when you're like, Maybe you're driving, or one person told me they were vacuuming, or oh. you're in the shower. I've been in just a flow state vacuuming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, so it's, anything, it's loud, calm. Yeah, yeah, it's anything that puts you in that state where you're alert, but you're relaxed. Mm -hmm. Because everything that you do oh, is easier and eight. more relax when you're relaxed. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it doesn't have to be yoga, and that's one thing why I wanted to create this anxiety relief training is to show people it doesn't have to be yoga, but th these trainings have all those components that mm -hmm. can help get you into a flow state, yeah. help you. But the other thing I was gonna say about yoga is if the class is too slow for you and you're still in your head, you gotta up your game a little, go to something stronger. <sighs> we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll finish like that, you'll be like, uh, <laughs> I did, we were talking, I went to a yoga class on Tuesday at my gym, but it was very fast paced. And mm -hmm. They do like strength building in it, mm -hmm. so that type of thing was more. Did you speed. get into flow state? I did, by the time she's like, oh, we're done, I'm like, what? oh my gosh, Suzanne's and? right, she's right, you know. <laughs> and what did you say the next morning? I was, so, I had not slept that well in so uh, long, and uh, seriously. It and it wasn't really that intense of a workout. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing I really try to get across in all my teachings is, you don't have to be killing it to be loving it and get the benefit. Mm -hmm. Like not everybody's looking to climb Mount Everest or win the CrossFit championship. Like right. I just really want to be able to do all the things I want to do. Mm -hmm. So, so what about that flow state specifically is really helpful for people who suffer with anxiety? Just getting out of your head. So I remember mm. when I was really young and my doctor was trying to help me with this and she had said to me multiple times, you just need to get out of your head. And she was trying to tell me, stop thinking about it. But that's all I could think about. Like when you run a business, that's all you think about. Like when you go to bed at night and you start to get relaxed, that's when you get a good idea for something mm -hmm. to do in your business. And you're like, I should get up and write that down. Oh. I should do something about this. No, I should go to sleep. I really need the sleep. <laughs> and so you, it's hard to tell somebody, stop thinking about the thing yeah. that you think about all the time. And when you are have that constant, like you were saying earlier, hopefully you don't have these panic moments, but every so often, but some people really do live with this kind of constant underlying feeling of dread. It's sort mm -hmm. of a chronic low-grade anxiety. And so to tell someone, stop thinking about that. And I know that's what she was saying. And how I about thought, calm down? Well, yeah, or how about she said, they <laughs> have people out, say relax. calm down. Just relax. Super unhelpful, super unhelpful. Yeah. yeah, but getting out of your head some way. So I kind of remember thinking, she wants me to run. I'm not a runner, I don't uh, wanna run. Uh. And I thought, but if I was running for a mile and a half, I would not be thinking about anything but how much I wanna stop running. Uh, Suzanne, I'm gonna correct you because it's not that you're not a runner. It's that running. I kind of felt that coming. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> the student becomes the teacher. Right. So language we've learned to mm -hmm. is really important to yes. say, like talking about your anxiety is like my anxiety. I have anxiety. I can't do that because of my anxiety. And instead of wording it as the anxiety, the anxiety I experience in that situation makes it challenging for me to do that. Mm -hmm. Or even saying or, part of me is anxious because it's yeah. not. If you are somebody who identifies with, I have anxiety it's my anxiety that keeps me from doing this. You kind of just reemphasize that. Mm -hmm. So if you could realize that's not all of who you are. You're also a business owner. You're also a mom. You're also a sister, a friend, a, a parent. So part of you might be anxious, just like part of you is hungry or part of you is sad. So mm -hmm. don't let it take over everything. Yeah, like owning it and acknowledging it, knowing it doesn't own you and kind of breathing so, in and letting it go. So what you're saying is I should say, not that I'm not a runner, but that I just prefer not to always be I, running. <laughs> As my, as my kiddos I'd say, I don't snacking. prefer carrots. That's oh, not, that's you're good. not supposed to say, I hate carrots, I don't eat yeah, carrots, exactly. carrots, I don't prefer carrots. So it's what the you're language. saying matters. Yeah. And I know it sounds a little superficial, a little woo-woo yeah. at times, but everything in here hears it and tries to yeah. adapt to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It wants to help you succeed in what you're saying. It's woo-tastic. We've had lots of puns this week. It's, it's been a punny. It's, it's been a punny week. It's been a punny week. Yeah, <laughs> I, I noticed that when I uh, was <laughs> raising my kiddos and saying I'm really bad at math, oh. and they hear that 
or I'm bad at reading, or I'm a bad drawer. And they were like, they don't want to try because then it makes it like once you do it once, you mm -hmm. have to be the best at it. Mm -hmm. So instead, I had to change my language to be like, some parts of math are hard for me, yeah. or I find that yeah, you know, I'm out like of practice. Yeah, or it's been a minute. Like mm -hmm. yeah, who is a good reader? Like what does that mean? I enjoy reading, or. Right. I don't prefer doing that right now. I'm going to try that later. Mm. And also, while you're doing that activity with your kids, or even in business, like maybe, let's relate it to business because not everybody's a parent, but like maybe uh, I'm a terrible salesperson. And instead, be like, I oh, need to work on my sales. Here's a big one. I mean, you hear this, probably Kate hears this all the time. Oh, I hate sales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you don't want to sound salesy and cheesy, but mm -hmm. really what you're just doing is sharing your knowledge and your experience with yeah. somebody who could benefit from it. And yeah. why would you not want to share that with them? Yeah, so. and if, if you think it's not your strong point or your strength of your business. Get someone whose it is. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just maybe saying that's something I need to work on and changing your mindset to say like, yeah, you're not gonna be the best at everything. Like I've always considered myself really good at photography and really bad at the business aspect, but I've managed to run a successful business for 15 years. So I'm mm -hmm. clearly good at something that kept people coming back to me. But when I say it out loud, I am immediately putting up a wall that I, I'm not going to learn more about this other aspect of what I need to know about. It limits the opportunities and possibilities. Right. And even mm -hmm. for anxiety and business, too, like because then you just automatically will miss some things that could be really helpful. Yeah. Do we have any questions? I'm just uh, rambling. So we're throwing it back to our team over there. Any questions on the yeah. How? Oh, yes. How do you up your game? Sorry, I'm on a delay. I'm, I'm hold on. Okay. Um, <laughs> how do you up your game? Um, how do you up your game if you're not in a flow state? Ooh. How do you up your game if you're not to get out of your head? You would, yeah. Yeah. You find an activity, and we we kind of we actually. It's so personal and unique to you, you really have to explore a lot of things, but there are some basic activities that will get just about anybody in a flow state. That's why I say, go for that 20 minute walk and pick up your pace because what happens when you get into a flow state is your brain releases what we call a flow cocktail. So five chemicals come out that make you feel really good. They quiet your inner critic. <laughs> it's a flow cocktail. We know what's cocktail. happening over here on the week. On the <laughs> it's almost Friday. But what happens is it quiets your inner critic so you're not so spun out about whatever you're working on and that creates space in your brain for new ideas to come in. So mm. while you're on that walk or you're in a yoga class or you did go for a run or you start, another, a couple that aren't exercise related is writing and reading, singing, listening to music, those things can get you in a flow state too. But you remember, you're trying to get out of your head a little bit, so if it feels like you're still in your head, walk faster, try harder, do, you know, do something else, but keep trying those activities because as you do it, your brain's gonna wanna find more flow states for you, so other things are gonna pique your curiosity and your interest and you'll get enthusiastic about something else. Like, I, I, I've never really been that outdoorsy, but the more yoga I did and opening the studio, I just seem to meet, you know, most people that come there are outdoorsy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, ah, I don't really like to hike or, you know, do this kind of thing or whatever. And then we started a hiking club. And I have been to more places, I'm from Oregon, I've been to more places in Oregon in the last three years than I have my entire life because mm -hmm. of that. And so I would have missed that completely if I hadn't have been doing just the walking and the yoga to get myself in the flow states. Or if you kept saying, I am not a nature I'm not person. An outside, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And now it's funny, I've said that in the past, like I used to say all the time, I'm the nervous one, uh, I'm scared to fly, uh, and I'm not outdoorsy. And now I teach relaxation, <laughs> I lead travel retreats, and I started an outdoor adventure group. <laughs> So I would have missed, be done. I yeah. missed out on all of that if I would have kept saying those things mm -hmm. to myself. So and I, I think it's also important to know that like that journey didn't happen overnight for you. It yeah. wasn't this like, bam, I'm miraculously, it was a long process. No, but I will say also that when I look back, it probably all shifted for me within the span of a few months after starting yoga. Really? Yeah, yeah, because I started breathing better. You don't realize how much like we sit like this kind of for, like we're all gonna sit up straight and take a breath, right? right? And I'm not saying you have to do that all day long. That's not it either. But every time you think about it, get a deeper inhale, let out a fuller exhale, and your body will start to create space and your nervous system will start to relax. That happened within a matter of weeks and months. 
But it took me a while to get stronger and braver. And mm -hmm. as I got stronger and braver, I started changing, the, and I learned to change the way I talked. So instead of saying I'm not very outdoorsy, I say, I'm becoming more outdoorsy all the time. Mm. Like I went, in fact, I'm 53, and I went for my first hike by myself up to the lake and back, which is only like a mile. But I was so proud of myself, because I was like, I did that by myself. She's winning. <laughs> she, yeah, she's winning. <laughs> But what I meant to say is like, not that like it took you a long time. Your it it took your path to yes. figuring this out yes. took a while. Yes. And her whole point of coming here and doing her course is that it okay. doesn't have to take you a while. I was trying to sales pitch you. No, I get it because you're right. Because you know? after having the studio for a while, people started asking more about coming to Yoga for Anxiety, and so that led mm -hmm. us to try to create the course. We did the workshop in person. Mm -hmm. I tried doing the course a few times on my own. So Super frustrating. Yeah. So now that's why we're trying to bring it to uh, more yeah. people. Because some people are so anxious, they don't want to come to a studio. Yeah, and I get for that. sure. It's a little intimidating to go anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard for me yeah. to like hear when people are like, especially women, are like, oh, I'm too scared to go to the gym. And, uh, you know, being, you know, we have a friend that comes. And I'm yeah. just like, you don't be scared. Let me come yeah. with you. I'll help you. We have someone that comes to the studio. She's a, been a pastor for 40 years, and she said people do the same exact thing in church. They come uh. in and they sit in the back pew, and they're <laughs> yeah. like, I don't know what's going to happen here. <laughs> yeah. So it's natural. It's yeah, natural it is to natural. be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for people who suffer with anxiety, if they know somebody who suffers with anxiety, and given your experience teaching workshops and doing this course, she's obviously very well versed. What is something like a habit or kind of things they do that maybe they don't realize contributes to their anxiety? Uh, they, their breath isn't flowing as well as it should. So we create resistance in our breathing mm -hmm. by the way we sit, by the, like when you get scared or you get tight or tense, or when you get scared or stressed, you get tense and tight and you kind of fold inward. Mm -hmm. And that creates a shallower breath. And when you breathe shallow, it causes your nervous system to feel out of balance and a little frazzled, which then can lead to an early signal of like alarm. So that creates some, some anxiety. But if you could relax your breathing, open up space, and that's really something you have to do ahead of time. It's like taking better care of your body will balance your nervous system and, and anxiety mm -hmm. will disappear. But in the moment, if you're having an anxiety attack, the best thing somebody can do to help you is to just be there and talk to you so that you feel like you don't escalate the fear around it because the mm -hmm. fear sometimes creates one in itself so if you can be with somebody that can just be there with you and be like it's all right i'm here just don't <laughs> say just calm down mm -hmm. just chill out chill out yeah. just relax it's all in your head. but sometimes right. there's there's other little things you can do like if you could change your sensations like eat something really sour stick your mm -hmm. hands in cold water then your nervous system has something else to do so it's mm -hmm. like hey wait what's happening what's going on here mm -hmm. and it kind of forgets about the anxiety for a minute that's interesting. interesting. My mom's a counselor at a school district. We're in, based in St. Louis, so she's here. Go, <laughs> Mom. Um, and it's funny, Go she mom. mentioned that when you said that, it spurred the thought that she always said is, like, go through your five senses. Like, if mm. you're really having a moment yes. of feeling anxious about something, like, look around the room, try to go through the five senses, and find something that hits all of those. And mm -hmm. it just gets your focus for that, that brief moment kind of out of yeah. what's making you anxious and it just shifts. directs It shifts, shifts your energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It shifts your focus, shifts your energy. So if you can just redirect yourself. Yeah, and mm -hmm. distract yourself. Sometimes that's helpful too. I think she has a question. <gasps> yes, Kate. How do you know? Like, how can you identify if somebody is just like stressed or has like actual like some sort of like low grade anxiety? How do you identify? If, ooh, does it matter? It, I was just gonna say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because whether your nervous system is reacting a little bit or a lot of it, it's an it's a reaction instead of a response. So when you're stressed out and you're getting short fused and maybe short with people around you or you start to get neck pain or tension in your shoulders, that's the beginning of your nervous system trying to tell you, hey, we're, it's too much, take a break. And it doesn't mean you have to lay around breathing slow and be relaxed all mm -hmm. the time, but obviously we're a little out of balance as a, as a whole if we're always having neck tension and uh, grinding teeth and headaches and things like that. So those are the beginning <laughs> signals. That's your body trying oh, to yeah. tell you something, mm -hmm. and if you don't listen and respond to it, it'll tell you something, it'll try harder to get your attention. So things escalate into pain and then they escalate into disease and illness and things so you're getting little signals all the time well and like you said that sometimes is your body's designed to do that for survival mm -hmm. so and if you want to speak on that I just thought that was interesting that yeah you get these little signals all the time that says hey do something different this isn't this isn't about this is out of balance and if we hadn't have had that mechanism built in you're born with it like you inhale and everything gets activated energy comes in and then you exhale and everything softens and relaxes but again, we don't take that full inhale and that full exhale all the time, so it starts to become stress. 
And then if you don't do something about it, balance it out, take time for yourself, it starts to become anxiety. And then if you don't take care of it and take time for yourself, it becomes heart disease or right. something more serious. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to get your attention to say, hey, take care of this. This is what you have. Mm -hmm. Without this, you don't have anything. Right. Well, and I really like that you said um, while we were filming her course that this isn't, like you, not to be demeaning anyway, but it's not a unique thing. You know, everybody has this mechanism. You're not alone. This is something that your body, maybe you are a little bit more sensitive. And I, if you want to yeah. explain smoke detector analogy, I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's just so to say good. that this is something that we all have that system in our body to alert us to things in order to survive. Yeah, I feel kind of like a, I feel like it's a little bit harsh to say when people come in, but sometimes they'll come to the workshop and they'll say, yeah, but I've been doing, it's genetic, it's been in my family, I, there's no way this out, and I kind of want to say, you're not that unique and special. Like, our nervous system responds to external stimulus in a specific way. Now, you may have other underlying things that impact it, but pretty much if you can get your nervous system back into balance, it's going to be you're gonna see significant improvement. Like you may have other things to deal with, but you will feel significant improvement. I don't think I've ever had anybody come to the workshop and leave there and say, because we have them do a little, you know, zero to 10 when they get there, mm -hmm. how, how anxious do you feel coming in? And then when they leave, there's always a minimum of a five point drop when they leave. Mm, like they definitely really? feel it. Now yeah. whether they sustain that, you know, they have to keep practicing to where the, yeah. and that's the other thing right. too. You don't have to do all these things forever for the rest of your life and change everything. You don't have to drop everything and change your whole life. Do these little things that have an impact, continue to do them until it just feels like a natural thing and you don't even have to think about it. Mm. So great. That's so Any other questions, Kate? I just want to make sure we're keeping up with the groups. Yeah, is there, um, if you grind or clench your teeth at night when you sleep, how do you address that when you're awake? Mm. Because if, if you don't grind your teeth when you're awake. Right, because you don't even know you're doing it mm -hmm. and your dentist will tell you. But we had a woman, I had a woman come in, she's been coming to our studio for like five years and she's she just casually off the cuff one day mentioned after class, she goes, yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys saved me from a root canal. And I was like, what? <laughs> And she's like, yeah, I used to grind my teeth all, all the time and now I don't do it anymore. Huh. So just general relaxation things. Like if you start doing a little like slow breathing before you fall asleep at night, or maybe do a little bit of like a 10 minute yoga routine to relax all your muscles. And it's not, I mean, it's not too cliche to say, you know, take a warm bath, use some Epsom salts. Um, things that you know for you really help you relax and go to sleep at mm -hmm. night is gonna keep you from doing those things in your sleep. That's so interesting. It's interesting. I went through a breakup earlier this year and just obviously it's stressful. And I would wake up every morning with a massive headache on both sides because I was grinding my teeth. Mm. So it is interesting how those things, even just sleeping, you're not even consciously mm -hmm. aware of it, but that stress just really impacts. And that's interesting. That's funny because you also know what it felt like to be falling in love mm -hmm. in the past couple of years. And so you're so relaxed that you don't have any of that. Mm -hmm. So you do know how that how that impacts you when you're stressed that you have those things and when you're so you right. got to just be always falling in love <laughs> yeah right. i'll be working let's on get it, it. <laughs> let's get that happening everybody tries to set me up here <laughs> everybody's trying to set me up so yeah if you know anybody if you know any young single men i'll, I'll take the um uh, references i've got dibs for my son yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm just looking at my list here because I have a lot of questions and just more so kind of on the business side of it. How has that been? Obviously, starting and running a business is stressful. Um, and as somebody who had anxiety, how did you navigate that new change of adding all that pressure into your life but not necessarily increasing the anxiety you had felt in the past? You know, when you get, when you actually feel like I actually, I feel like I can say confidently I eliminated anxiety completely like I've been through lots of rough things in the past 25 years and I never even had an inkling of anxiety after that and that was after a decade of constant anxiety attacks trips to the hospital all kinds of all kinds of things so it was it was pretty severe it was it was really messing up my life but I got when once it once you get past it and you feel like you're past, like one day I just realized oh my gosh I haven't had one, but I also haven't even thought about it for like six months. Mm -hmm. That's when I really felt free. And so I felt so much more confident and stronger that when I started my business, I, I had more courage and confidence than I did before. So mm -hmm. um, just running, trying to keep it all going, um, it does get stressful if you let it, but I have, you know, I have 20 years behind me of making sure I have some balance. So mm -hmm. I still practice yoga because I love it. I still practice meditation because I love it. And I think that keeps my system in check. Mm. So if, you if you're if you running a business where it's not like wellness related, 
I think you have to make an extra effort. Like we've watched you guys around here this week. <laughs> like these guys are on fire and they're constantly going and they're hunched over these screens and they're fixing all the tech. You have to make a concerted effort to get back, mm -hmm. to kind of open mm -hmm. up your body a little, to go out for a walk and get fresh air, to take a lunch hour, Kelvin, <laughs> 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 to have a lunch break. Um, but yeah, it takes, it takes like, I'm at the studio a lot, so I have an opportunity to do those things yeah. for my job. Mm -hmm. But if I was working on computers and tech and in the software world, I would have to make a concerted effort to get outside and do some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Some breathing, little yoga, a brisk walk. I keep trying to get these guys to go for a walk at lunch, and they're like, we're going to get sweaty. I'm like, who cares? I'm I sweaty like right it. now. <laughs> I know right now I am getting a little sweaty, but uh, yeah. I'll join her. Now that I've learned all about mm -hmm. um, stress relief, I'll be and what happens on the walk. And, and I think the biggest thing is you learn as a business owner what happens when you don't do it because we've all worked too hard for too long for weeks at a time. Like There have been projects we've had, and when we do teacher training, those are long days. But you know what I've done over the past few years? I made the teacher training easier. For all of us because I'm like why am I why is this so mm. grueling when the whole concept we're teaching is balanced uh, and right, so I made yeah. the teacher training more balanced and every we all love it more the teachers uh, and so the people smart. so that's you such have a smart to rework lesson. your plus I have a business coach that I would love to share his information with all of you guys because he's probably I would say 95% of the reason we made it through the last few years and he said you're creating a business to support your lifestyle not the other way around. Mm. That's your whole strategic plan. That's some snaps. Yeah. It is interesting because I think a lot of people, at least I've seen that in the U.S., it's just you have that we live to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that is everything. In other countries, you work to live. It supports mm -hmm. the fun things, the lifestyle, the socialization you have in other areas. So. But as a business owner, you feel like everything's your responsibility. Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. I'm never going to ask anybody to clean the studio. I feel like that's my delegate. job. Right? Yeah. And so after a while, like I was doing so many things I, what that didn't leave, you know what it did? It didn't leave time for me to discover something like this. Mm. So over the past couple of years, he's helped me streamline the business so well that then I had some creative space and then I started thinking about the online thing more, of course, through the last couple of years anyways. Um, but I would have never found you guys if I didn't have that space. Mm -hmm. I was just too, too busy on that wheel. Yeah, delegating is important. It's huge. Uh, it's a small, it's and a small finding the people, like you said earlier, Sarah, finding the people who love it and are really good at it, find those people to do those things. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of common, I know, in right. business, yeah. but we just didn't do it. I just yeah. was like, whoever wants to do it can do it. I'll do everything else. And yeah. that's not sustainable. I think that goes back to, like, just women in general wanting to not only control every aspect, but, but being good always at it. Feel, yeah, being yeah. good at it and always feeling like things are going to get dropped if we don't do them. I'm sure people yes. can relate and are maybe giving me some snaps, but like, <laughs> you know, it's hard to say like, you know what? I don't have time for this. I don't have the energy for it. And I'm going to delegate it, that task to somebody else who, you know, wants to do it. And people want to do stuff. They want to feel useful. Yeah. I did drive myself a little nuts the past couple of years trying to figure out all this back end tech mm -hmm. stuff. And I'm like, I'm smart. I'm tech savvy. I yeah. can do it. And I did it. And we figured it out during the last couple of years of doing some online videos, but nothing compared to what you guys do. <laughs> and being able to just turn it over to yeah. is such a huge relief. Yeah. Yes. Huge relief. It feels amazing. I feel like a real business owner. <laughs> <laughs> Working about that. Working with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing that, for me, I struggle with delegation, but it also is that, of course you can do it. Yeah. All of you can do all of these pieces of the business, and obviously our software helps you with that. Yeah. But how nice would it be if you didn't mm. have to? Mm -hmm. If you could trust your staff, if you could trust your employees mm -hmm. to handle these things. And even doing oh all of gosh. this, mm -hmm. even handing off all this, I have spent, and this is a back to the energy shift, it takes so much energy to be constantly trying to figure stuff out that's mm -hmm. not really your specialty, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I can talk about yoga and breathing and stress and things like all day long without any effort. doesn't use my energy. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out all this tech stuff. And I, was, I just told somebody last night, oh, my gosh, this is like two and a half years of tech energy that was just, like, driving me nuts. Completely off. Uh, and now yeah. it opens up. I can think of like three new projects yeah. I want to start because I, I yeah. would have never even put those on my list because it was too far out. Yeah, we have a client that I did a. Uh, it really opens up your chance to expand your business. Yes. Yeah, we did a. I did a highlight interview, and she said it. The portal made it so much easier for her to oh. start one business that she went off and just yeah. was like, "Oh, I have unlimited. I'm going to start another." Yeah. And I, she was like, "I may not have had the time to to think like." of moving forward to the next right. step and you know i think that that's just another trick is to just kind of you know condense yeah. 
take out the tabs, right? close I the tabs. I think with your software too, with your program, the way you guys do things here, I even thought that this week mm-hmm. also, like her, I was thinking, oh, I could just plug in another business right here yeah. and mm-hmm. use all the same stuff. And then I was like, ooh, what if I did that one too? Yeah. So it really, it feels <laughs> like a really, like I don't know how I would I would run a business now without this. Yeah, when she first showed me, I've only been here since November, and she, I was like, where was this when I started my business 15 mm-hmm. years ago? This. I still don't have email integration, and uh, I'm trying to like don't wane. Say that. No, well, <laughs> yeah. I'm not in the portal. I'm trying to wane my small business out so I can oh, do right. this full time. I mean, I do this full time, but like trying to get less yeah. business. But I, it's just one of those pieces. That I was like, I don't need it. I can do it all by myself. And it's mm-hmm. so silly because it just t- it takes so much time and effort. The time and energy opening up is just ah. massive. Yeah, that's important. Well, and. I mean, all of this goes together so well. Mm-hmm. You know, the more you can kind of delegate those tasks out or have the software that helps you with it, the less stress you're having in your life, mm-hmm. the more mm-hmm. you can get into flow. You're making a better areas. business decision. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you have those opportunities to spot things. And I think mm-hmm. that is so key. And when you're talking about them, like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. this is it. Just mm-hmm. that once you can just free up a little bit of space, mm-hmm. yeah. all of those ideas, that just allows you to move to that next step. Yeah. And I think a lot of people get stuck because it's just, I can't even look there. And it's mm-hmm. more fun that way. It's way right. more fun. Yeah. Because well, you just feel like you're yeah. going forward. Makes and and coming up with the ideas is really the fun part. And then you have the work in the middle that can be fun or not. And then once you see it to fruition, you're like, oh, now I'm here. Right. And, and that right. mentally checks things off like for your, your soul. You're like, oh, I've accomplished something. Mm-hmm. Now what can I do? But it's like getting people through those little steps. And anyway, yeah, this is so great. It's so great. Are we good on questions? I just want to make sure we're. Yeah, just a lot of really good feedback. (gasps) Uh, Oh, how can your program help with focus? Oh, how can my program help with focus? (laughs) Because when you learn how your nervous system works with your brain and your mind and what you're choosing to focus on, you're going to be way more intentional about how you're thinking about your business, how you're thinking about stress and anxiety, you're gonna be way more clear about what you wanna think of and when you wanna think about it. Mm. It's, it's so easy to see when you realize how your brain's trying to help you figure things out, you just like give it a, um, give it a task and it'll do it. And I know a lot of people, and I think probably why that person's asking this, is they feel like they're scattered and they've just got to do this, 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 and this, and then they end up not getting anything done. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was the tech piece for me. It was so overwhelming. Sometimes I'd just be like, I'm going to go get coffee. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I don't even... We don't know how that feels, do we? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But I'd go for a drive. Or I'd go for a drive. I'd just say, I'm just going to go for a drive. Mm -hmm. But um, the whole second part of our program, our training talks about how this works and things like, I'm sure you guys have heard this. I hate to mention it in a casual setting like this because once people hear you talk about the reticular activation system, it makes you think of the law of attraction where people say, oh, you picture something and you get it. But really, it's a filter. Um, scientifically, physiologically, it's a filter in your brain that's helping you focus, but you have to choose what you want to focus on. And once you're more relaxed and you're not so stressed, also things are clearer. Bill Murray has a quote. He's famous (laughs) for saying every time he went to do a comedy show or when he got on stage to act or with a film, the more relaxed he was, the funnier, uh, funnier he was. And I at I first that. took that to mean, oh, relaxation's gonna make me funnier. <laughs> <laughs> but what he meant was when he was relaxed, he was on it. He got into flow quicker, mm-hmm. everything happened, but he was just clearer. Mm-hmm. And so I think a little bit of relaxation and a little bit of more intentional what you want to think of, what you want your brain to help you find is gonna do that. Mm-hmm. There's a woman out there that wrote a book, and I'm kind of blank on her name right now, but she says it's a, the difference between a spotlight and a flashlight. Mm-hmm. So you can have a broad overview, and then when you want to focus on one thing, you turn your flashlight on. Mm. I always like that. Yeah, that. That's good. It's good. Ugh. That's good. And I think um, for some people, you know, the list, some people don't like lists, or they type out lists. I like a list. I, <laughs> make, I like to manually write out things, like, you know, and then when I get really busy, I put them in subcategories. Mm. And for summer, I don't like to type it because I feel like it's going to get lost in the shuffle. But if I hand write it on a notebook, you should see all my notebooks, guys. I have a lot of notebooks. If I hand write it and see it in front of me, I may think this is a lot. Or I may think now it's out of my brain, it's on paper. That clears up room in my brain to micromanage the tasks and make them feel doable. And I think that having that to do with like him saying be relaxed and then it just comes naturally. Once you kind of see everything you're like oh 
it's I don't know. For me, it's like it's not so bad when it's out yeah. of my brain. When it's in my brain, it's like I may be thinking of one thing five hundred times. Right. Yeah. And so it like scatter. You know, you have this like really hyper scattered feeling. But when I see it all, I'm like, okay, now it's there, and now I can cross it off. There's some science behind that too. I know. Like Julia, I love it. Julia Cameron wrote The Artist's Way, which I think business mm. owners should read because you're creative. Mm -hmm. As an entrepreneur, you're just way more creative than you give yourself credit for or maybe you imagine. She has something called morning pages and you just write a stream of consciousness. You set a timer for yeah. five or 10 minutes or maybe mm. more and you just write whatever comes into your brain and you'll just see things tumble out. Mm -hmm. And once you let them tumble out, then you have some creative space and you're like, oh, I'm gonna do that and that. And mm -hmm. so it kind of takes Sick. things out of the way, helps you clear some space, but that's another, yeah. that's what you're doing when you're making lists is you're yeah. getting it all out mm -hmm. and then it's super clear. Yeah, and also I think like back to the flow state, like if you're hiking with friends, I got into hiking during um, the pandemic and talking things through with people yeah. out loud and just having a little bit of socialization, I, I think that can also get you in a flow state because once you hear yourself say something and maybe even see someone react, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, that doesn't sound as bad now that I've said it. Mm -hmm. Like that feeling I've been holding heavy doesn't, it feels lighter now that I've put it out in the universe and it's out of my head. Or someone says, that doesn't even seem like a big deal. You're like, oh, oh mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> in your head, I mean, and that's why I love the community aspect of our, our group is like, mm -hmm. you need someone to tell you that's not a big deal. Or you need someone to say, yeah, put that at the top of your list. Right. Mm -hmm. Or you'll get there soon and it's okay if you're not there yet. Right. You know, and just having feedback from maybe someone who isn't your mm -hmm. best friend or your mom or your child, having some outside perspective, right. look at your business and say, Okay, Suzanne, you, you were stating that the tech part isn't your favorite and you're not that strong about it. But listen, I know this person yeah. who can get it all, or this program, right. tag, tag, wink, um, <laughs> that can kind of set you all up and ease that part of it for you. And you're like, oh, if I just said, said this five years ago, <laughs> you know, maybe <laughs> I, yeah. But I mean, I think that's what's great about your program that you're uh, recording right now and teaching is that, um, helping people kind of get from that stuck point to the next part with tasks that don't feel challenging. They're not or mass, they're simple. Yeah, they're yeah. simple. And I just wanna take everything back to the breathing. If mm -hmm. you can just get yourself breathing mm -hmm. a little bit better, a little bit more open, a little slower, I think you're gonna find your energy shift around a lot yeah. of things. Keelan, we do maybe one of oh, those yeah. breathing exercises. Oh yeah, you wanna end on that? I think that'd be a good ending. Or do we have any more questions? Oh, that's great. I think Okay, yeah. We end on one? Yeah, let's do, do because, it. Because I know a lot of people, this will actually help with the oh, question about move. focus too, is a lot of people come to me and say, when I tell them we're gonna do a little yoga and meditation or some breathing or mindset, they're like, oh, I just can't. I can't settle down. My mind is going a thousand mm -hmm. miles a minute. There's no way I can focus. So what I want you guys to do first is just take two or three breaths and I'll explain what we're gonna do next, but you go ahead and take a few deep breaths and you'll notice these two just sat up a little bit when they did that. <laughs> so now watch their shoulders. Take a big breath in, go ahead and lift up and then drop your shoulders as you exhale. So that alone is kind of a relief, right? So you can take a couple of those. And then when you feel like you've kind of got some space, we're gonna do a little thing with your hands. You wanna bring your hands about a centimeter apart and then as you inhale, you'll pull your hands apart. And as soon as you start to exhale, you start bringing your hands back together. But the key here is you wanna finish your exhale right as your hands get back to that one centimeter apart. So try to do this and move in your own pace with your own breath. You inhale to bring them out and then exhale to bring them back together. And try that just about three more times. Inhale, open. Exhale, try to end your exhale right when your hands get close. Okay, two more. Last one. Good, now release that and just take another breath, just kind of soften, move back. And just notice if while you were trying to get your hands back the right distance with your exhale, were you thinking of anything else? I'm guessing most of you weren't thinking of anything else because you really were focused on getting the movement in sync with your breath, but also the breathing was soothing your nervous system and that keeps your mind from really going all over the place. So in the moment, sometimes a couple of deep breaths really can help. If you're in the midst of an actual anxiety attack, they're not super helpful, you just have to get through that. But really doing that breath work ahead of time 
first thing when you wake up, last thing when you go to bed, is really enough. Mm -hmm. You'll start thinking about it more often throughout the day. I'm going to be honest. I was thinking that I was breathing really loudly. You, you, you do have a heavy <laughs> breath. <laughs> I will say <laughs> I have a slight thing with breathing. I didn't even notice it. I didn't even I'm notice it. I'm going to be honest. I was it like, is... Sarah's breathing very quietly, and I'm fully <laughs> taking this in. <laughs> I, it's great. I just have this thing. We have... <laughs> I don't know, just like snoring or mouth loud breathing, chewing. Oh, loud chewing, misophonia all. or whatever. Okay. Oh, I didn't Sarah. even. Uh, let me it say, me I didn't even bit. notice. But one of the things <laughs> I've learned in the past three years is we should never be breathing through our mouth for anything. Never like breathing it, out though, right? No, Exhaling out. not oh. even when you're running. Not even when you're so working you were breathing out. out your nose. The more. I was breathing out through my mouth. Yeah, the more you can breathe so. in and out through your nose. For, uh, and if you, we talk about this a, a lot, in the, did you not pay attention in the course? Oh, uh, you remember know. nasal <laughs> breathing only. I always breathe. I always. Why do they say breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth? I'll tell you why, because when you're in track in seventh grade in the 70s, that was how they taught it, is you I opened your mouth. I was not alive in the 70s. <laughs> because you wanted to offset heat. You wanted to let heat out, so it helped, so you didn't overheat But even in yoga classes now, I thought that's what they said. Never, oh, okay. never. It's well, sometimes while. out through the mouth to do this. Like when you guys sat up, we went <sighs> like that. Okay, let me say something about the big sigh. Occasionally a big sigh is good, and if you're telling your teenagers not to do that at the, at the dinner table or in a classroom, <laughs> you're training them to hold it in and to keep yeah, their everything a little tight. So even though it might be like they're irritated, what's happening is they're also a little frustrated and stressed. Maybe they're bored, maybe they don't understand, but that exhale is relieving stress out of their mm. body. So the exhale is good. Mm -hmm. But in general, we're never, we never need to open our mouth. Now that you know that, you're not going to be able to unsee it. Everyone you see is going to be breathing out their mouth. Sarah is okay. never going to breathe heavily next to me or sit next to me <laughs> this, during birth. This is funny. We have this in our family because I, I just had surgery. I, some of you might know this to fix breathing because I could not literally breathe out of my nose for a very long time. So I had been a mouth breather and we called it whale sharking <laughs> because whale sharks open their mouth all the time to get food. So maybe that'll help you anytime you're breathing out of your mouth. Don't like, be a whale shark, Sarah. I'm whale sharking. Yeah. And it'll be a good reminder to breathe good. through your nose. So. Oh and God, for a I'm lot dying. of people, if you have struggled with an actual anxiety attack, and now I'm telling you start breathing through your nose, it's going to feel like you're not getting enough air. So mm -hmm. don't try to do this all day, every day. Like, mm -hmm. start small. Do two or three nasal breaths, and then let it go. Later on, two or three nasal breaths. What you're going to find is it helps you sleep better. It slows everything down. It lowers your blood pressure. It increases the energy or the the circulation in your cardiovascular system because it releases nitric oxide into there. It also helps you kind of control your CO2 levels, which is something else we go into. But nasal breathing is one of the best things you can do for yourself, mm. your stress, your focus, and your anxiety. Mm. Awesome. Should have started with that. Oh, you know what? Let's do the whole thing again. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> well, is there anything you would like to leave our audience with? Maybe a tip or anything? That Last one, parting words. That one. Don't whale shark. Don't whale. Nasal breathing only. <laughs> you're going to see... You're going to see, you're going to feel so many benefits. I had somebody that had a little, um, she has the watch and she was. Um, oh, it tells you to breathe. Yeah, well, no, she was checking her, her blood pressure. And her mm. blood pressure dropped 15 points mm. when she was hiking and running wow. by nasal breathing only. Because she, she started doing it what? and she had already kind of been tracking her stats or something. And she came in just a couple weeks ago and said, ever since I started doing that, my blood pressure's dropped, like even when wow. I'm running. So it's good for you. Yeah. Nasal breathing only. Well, we appreciate you so much. Yes. It sounds like you guys have all been, what's happening? Are we good? That's where can I find out about you? Oh! oh. Plug yourself, girl. Where are they going to find out about us? Yes. So, so right now, uh, Love Yoga Studio in Albany, Oregon is my main gig. Uh, we have some online videos there and online meditations. But what I'm doing here is I'm creating Love Strong training, anxiety relief training. So whether you're into yoga or not, it's going to teach you more about the breathing, the nasal breathing, getting into a state of flow, retraining your nervous system, and really honing your focus. She's got an it's Instagram page yes. where we have been featured recently. And that too is Love Yoga Studio. So we'll start doing the yeah. Love Strong training yeah. uh, Instagram too. We're in Facebook. We have a private Facebook group for this also. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're yeah all, and the, I, all the usual places. To plug her videos that we're creating her content too, it's not, there's very little yoga in it. It's oh, just very yeah. educational mm -hmm. in the other aspects of what she's talking about, which I think is really important because there's definitely an audience that is very geared towards yoga. But I think this is for a very wide range of an audience because probably the people watching in our group and everybody in the, you know, the majority of people have experienced and could benefit from 
your training and have experienced some forms of anxiety in their life. And I think that learning so much from you this week, it feels just so encompassing to so many mm -hmm. people. It's not a selective group yeah. that you're targeting. Mm -hmm. So I think you've been amazing and Thank we appreciate you. taking yes. the time to you. talk about what you do to our, our lovely members. Mm -hmm. This has yep. been really exciting, really fun, and I'm grateful to be here. We could just all finish with a big exhale. Okay, ready? <sighs> oh, I did it out my nose. <laughs> I did it through my mouth. <laughs> I did it out my nose. Should we try it again? I just started okay. to laugh because okay. I saw it happening. I was still loud. I'm still louder than Sarah. It's fine. It's I'm winning. Fine. It's all good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you next day. week. <laughs>